H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Teams. So it's like a compiler installed on a client machine which is outside of my cluster. And generally it will sit on client machine only. Piggies use it to convert pig scripts to series of MapReduce jobs. This point is important. And try to understand this. Piggies. Pig engine is used to convert. So to convert. Pick scripts to okay. So, for example, if I write a single a line in my pick script, it may be converted to more than one MapReduce program. So, if I say mm, join command in pick. It might be command it might be a single statement in my big script. But internally it might get boiled to two or three or four MapReduce programs. We will not be able to say or we will not be able to justify like if I write a single statement how many MapReduce programs are going to be created. So it is internal to my cluster how it's going to convert it. As a end user or as a developer we, uh, which we are sitting on the client side we will not be able to understand how many MapReduce programs are going to be created before I submit this job but once you submit it you will be able to see that the internally a MapReduce program is being called and the execution is going to be happened but before the execution I will not be able to see or I will not be able to guarantee that uh, three MapReduce programs are going to be created for this statement or something like that so it's like each inbuilt function is like a MapReduce program. We are not sure how many MapReduce programs are going to be created. Maybe every line in PIG might be converted to MapReduce or maybe one or two lines in a PIG will be combined together and it might create a single MapReduce program or anything, any vice versa can happen. So if you see, if you try to understand this diagrammatically, PIC resides on the user machine and also the PIC system sits on my client machine itself. So the development, the development process of writing the program is changed but the execution of the process on the cluster is not changed. I will write a program on my user machine and I will submit it and as usual Hadoop cluster is going to execute that job on the cluster. So there is no exemption for my cluster rather than executing like it executes a MapReduce program but the input and output that were written on my cluster will also remain the same. The only thing that is going to be changed is whatever the program that I am writing on my user machine. And so, so, yes, Pig Engine is also on the client. The only execution will happen on Hadoop cluster. Everything apart from that will be sitting on my user machine only. Good. Cool. So 
so no need to install anything extra on your Hadoop cluster so even though you want to execute a pig script at the cluster point of view I don't need any changes it's the only thing that I have to change is on my user machine that's it so let's take a sample use case of where I would be using pig okay so this particular use case talks about de-identifying personal health information okay suppose uh, we have a requirement like uh, uh, there is some insurance company and he has to collect all the patient information from different labs and different hospitals for a particular patient okay so that information might be very huge and the sources that it is going to get might be from different areas as well uh, suppose uh, he can get the scan reports of his heart from one particular hospital and the scan reports of his brain from another hospital or maybe the overall body checkup he might be getting it from different hospital so he would be getting from different sources and in different files but before uh, if at all he has to give some health insurance to this patient uh, that insurance company has to collect all this information right so whatever the hospital that it's going to give you this insurance details it will not give you the whole uh, data that is I mean the whole raw data that was available firstly it has to decrypt that information such that these insurance companies don't understand all the information but only the requirement required information so for example uh, my hospital is having information such as patient name blood group date when he has a checkup and uh, some internal details like uh, hemoglobin percentage or something there will be uh, like this right uh, red corpuscles or uh, white corpuscles percentage and all those percentages will be there right we are not sure what even uh, whenever we see our reports we will not understand what the other things that were there in our lab reports right so all those things the insurance company doesn't need it just need to know like whether uh, the report is positive or negative so after all the information if you observe in our report it will say like positive or negative so that is the only information that is needed by insurance so if at all this particular person wants to get some health insurance the insurance company needs to know about the patient name maybe the blood group when he has uh, the recent checkup when he did it and whether the report is giving a positive result or a negative result apart from that it doesn't need all this information so what happens internally is all this information will be decrypted such that it will remain as a secret the person uh, the, uh, the person's health details will be in a safe site so the decrypting is one of the big challenge and huge amount of data flows into our system daily and there are multiple data sources that we need to aggregate also so aggregation and decryption is one of the challenging tasks here so now what we do to do some analysis to our Hadoop is first of all first of all we will dump all the data which is available in CM CSP format into our HDFS so for dumping we might use different tools as of now I am using a scoop so we will talk much about scoop on our later point of time but as of now understand that scoop is a tool that is available to store I mean to retrieve the data from one particular area and it will load the data I mean it will help us to load data into our HDFS which is mainly used for our storage so once it is stored into our HDFS cluster we can start doing or performing some processing on my data available so it reads the CSV file from HDFS and I will write a pick script such that it will de-identify columns based on configuration on store the data back in 
csv file so in pick we have a function called as deidentify the function itself is called as deidentify which will identify mm. which will automatically decrypt some particular columns whatever we are going to select so suppose I have hemoglobin percentage in my report and I want to decrypt it so I can just directly give it as hemoglobin so the actual percentage will not be shown on my output so it will be some it will be generated in some decrypt form so using my pick script I will de-identify all the config uh, all the con columns that were in need and again I will generate an output file where I will store again on my HDFS cluster now if at all I want to write some MapReduce program or I want to do some extraction on this data then at later point of time I can write a MapReduce program that was residing on my HDFS so here PIG is used for a initial abstraction so as I told you most of the time PIG is used for initial abstractions so once the data whatever we want to um, perform some other analysis uh, the output will be again stored on my HDFS and then I will write maybe I will write a MapReduce program or something else to do some simple operations rather than doing some complex operations so if at all I want to do a join I will initially write a PIG script and I will save that output on my HDFS and after that I will write a MapReduce program to perform anything else on top of it so that's what a sample use case on my healthcare so let's see some of the use cases of PIG so the first one is a web log processing so it's like a filtering unnecessary things or grouping multiple data sets or converting a particular file in from one format to another format whatever it might be some processing on my web logs so for that I can use pick and the second one is data processing for search programs so we we might get huge te text files and I want to do some data processing on these huge files for that also I can use pick for the first two points of processing of web logs and data processing I can very well write MapReduce programs also to do these things but the next point support for ad hoc queries across large cluster instead of writing a MapReduce program here writing a PIG script is much more easier so all the ad hoc queries or whatever the filtrations I want to do it's always better I select PIG rather than MapReduce and the next one is rapid or quick prototyping of algorithms for processing large data large data sets so consider the case like I got some 50 terabytes of data into my Hadoop cluster and I am not sure what exactly this Hadoop cluster contains and also at the same point of time even I am not sure what I want to process I want to do some processing but I'm on I'm not sure like what exactly I want to do on my cluster maybe after doing some few three to four select statements I will be able to understand like what kind of information I am having on my cluster such that I can decide myself like what I want to do exactly on my Hadoop cluster so for those quick prototypings of algorithms I will write I will try to write four to five algorithms in pick scripts and and I will check what exactly I want to extract through my Hadoop cluster so rather than writing a very big MapReduce program where in case I don't know what to do exactly it's better always I write pick script and see the outputs and understand what is there on my Hadoop cluster and think about what I want to extract exactly so the point is researchers wanted to quickly write a script and do a test theory on this data whatever that is available so uh, one point where I will not select pig is if at all I want my output uh, 
to generate very fastly then I will look for a MapReduce program instead of a PIG program because internally my PIG program will be converted into a MapReduce program so it's like one more step adding on top of my MapReduce right so if at all there is a time constraint for me then it's always better I select a MapReduce program rather than a PIG program so if my MapReduce program takes 5 to 6 seconds for execution my PIG program may take 7 to 8 seconds for execution so anyways for Hadoop it is mainly used for batch processing and time will not be a big constraint on it people will look for PIG but if at all you want to do some uh, real-time analytics on Hadoop in later versions of Hadoop or maybe later point of time PIG would not be a right choice so it's up to you how you want to decide or maybe in real time if you are working in a project you will be getting or you have to analyze like okay I got a project sometimes you will get a project directly stating that uh, do this project on PIC or maybe do this on MapReduce sometimes you will come across situations like you have to decide yourself like whether you want to process it through PIC or maybe you want to process it through MapReduce so you will be undergone to one or through two meetings to decide on it and later on later part you will start working on whatever the decision you take or may be taken by your managers or something like that so how it works so there are few steps that were involved for pick execution as well okay the first step in a pick program is to load the data you want to manipulate from HDFS so whatever the data first of all you will copy the data into our HDFS and again you will load it into your PIC system in order to do some manipulations on it so the statement that is used to do this is load so there is a command I will show you whenever I start showing you the PIC executions there will be a command called as load which is used to do this particular functionality so whatever or whenever you want to, to do some data analysis through PIC this is the first step or this is the mandatory step that you have to follow then you run the data through a set of transformations so after your load command whatever steps that you are going to write in your PIC script each step is called as a transformation so a transformation is nothing but a function or some process that you are going to do uh, maybe I would write a group by function or joining function or filter function so whatever function I am going to do on the data that was selected through my load command all those steps will be called as transformations only so a uh, transformations might be again like union distinct filter split order group co group hundreds of built-in functions are available and finally once you are done with all your processing finally you dump the data to your screen or you store the results in a file somewhere so again two more commands are there one is dump command and one is store command where you will be able to store your data so the difference between dump and store is I have written a transformation and once that is done I want to see what is happening on my transformation with that particular statement I want to see what would be my output at that point of time I can dump for example let me show you a equal to um, select customer ID comma order customer ID comma order underscore ID I am taking the same customer and order table for easy understanding purpose so I will write as select customer ID comma order ID from customer table comma order table I am just trying to write a simple DB2 statement rather than a PIC script because I will show you how a PIC script or how to write a PIC script but as of now just to understand the flow I am writing you a simple 
db2 statement only not epic script from the table where customer id is equal to or maybe some a dot b dot where a dot customer underscore id equal to b dot customer underscore id so this is a sample db2 statement right everyone will be able to understand this so whatever the output that i am going to get on this statement i would be storing it in a i have declared a field called as a and all this output would be stored on a so after this statement gets executed i want to see what is my output so it might be a part of my pick script I don't say that this is the final step or maybe this is the only step that is residing in my pick script. For example, if I have pick statement, total 10 statements in my pick script and this particular line is, line is fifth or sixth statement and immediately if I want to see the output of fifth and sixth statement I will just give it as dump a so this statement will show you what is the output of my select customer id underscore uh, customer id and order id from customer table and order table and the next one is store command so once all your execution is finished I want to store my final results somewhere in a file or somewhere in my HDFS at that point of time I will write a store command so I have 10 statements in my pick script and everything is executed and I want to store the final output somewhere else in a file at that point of time I will write it as store your alias whatever you are going to store that so that's how it works so if you take the workflow here the first one is load and the second is set of transformations And the third one is dump or store. So these are the only three major flow through in our pick script. But if you take the map reduce, this is a very big flow, right? So lot many steps were involved in my map reduce. Whereas if I take my typical workflow, it is very small. So that's one of the advantage of pick. So once these statements were written, that is all the pig Latin statements were written, it will be given input as to, to my pig system and it will convert all these compiles, compile and optimize, compile and optimize. and then converts them into a series of map reduced jobs and finally to my cluster so this is what the typical flow through on my pick so this is a sample pig program so the first statement or the first mandatory statement for pig program as I told you is a load statement right so I am loading a sample file so maybe the name of my sample file is sample.log so I will load that file as user colon care array comma timestamp colon int comma query colon care array using pig storage as of now just forget about this pig storage and try to concentrate on this load command as well as this particular thing 
So in my load statement, I will give the file whatever I want I wanted to load into my PIC system. And later on, if at all I know the schema of the file, I will declare the schema here as user timestamp in the in the sense I have a sample.log file which consists of three columns, which is user timestamp and query, and I'm loading it into a particular alias called as A. So A is the output storage of my load command. So sample.log is my sample file. And after that, we are declaring the schema only in case if we know about our input file. If we don't know, we will just skip this command and I will just say it as load sample.log using pick storage. Okay, so A is like a alias for my fetch input data where I can use A in my rest of the programs. So if at all I want to access the output that was generated through this statement, I can directly access A instead of writing all this statement. So, and now what I am doing is group A by user. So user is my first column and I am trying to group all the outputs that were written into my A. So suppose sample dot is a local file system or HDFS file system. First of all it would be a local file system and later on you would be loading it into HDFS for able to process by pick. Okay. So user is one column, timestamp is another column and query is another column. So user I have Rahul maybe and then Akshay, Nisha, Arjun. Okay. And timestamp maybe 2014, 929. something like this okay never mind about the data just try to understand and query as a b c d e f or maybe okay some data just imagine like that now group a by user for example, I have this Rahul row repeated again. This statement will, the B output will have all these as stored as B equal to Rahul comma Rahul And again, the same for Akshay as well. So in this way, I will have all the data. So for each of the user, I would be getting stored in B. Now, C is equal to, for each B, generate user comma count of A. So, for each user, I am generating the username comma count. So, for example, if you take Rahul, you would be getting Rahul comma 2 or something like that. And finally, store C into output. 
or maybe dump C. It's up to me whether I want to store the file or just I want to display the output. So if I take the sample results, it would be like user ID in case where it is Rahul in our scenario and the count would be 2 here. And if I take Akshay, it would be Akshay comma 1 here. So that's how I would write a simple PIC program. So the only difference between store and dump is we can see outputs for each of the step using dump whereas the final output would be stored in a file if I use a store statement. So if you observe the whole script, do you see any MapReduce conversions happening here? No, right? But internally, if at all I execute this simple PIC program, you will able to see that a MapReduce function is going to be executed and it will show you uh, the percentage of map program finished, all those things we had seen earlier, right? So everything the same way you will be able to see. But as a user or as a developer, we won't see any MapReduce statement in my PIC program or PIC script. Right. So let's understand each of the statement. First of all, data will be stored into HDFS by copying from our local file system and load function to read the input data and make it available to the PIC program. So this load function, once it gets executed, then only my PIC system will be able to access this sample.log file. And next, analogous to the job done, input format in MapReduce. So you can imagine this load function as an input format in MapReduce. Uh, the input format is responsible for dividing the data into input splits and making it available to MapReduce, right? So the same here, once this load function is written, it will be, uh, the data will be available to my PIC system. And the next one is transformation steps. So the transformation logic is where all the data manipulation happens. So here B and C, both these steps are called as transformation steps. Here I am doing some functionality. I am generating a user come account and I am grouping. So I am doing some functionality here and that's the reason it is called as transformation step. We can, so as I told you there are many built-in functions available and all those steps can be written in our transformation step only. So it can be like filter out rows that are not of interest or maybe joining of two data sets or maybe group by to do some aggregations or something like that or order results. So we all, uh, I hope that we all are familiar with these in our SQL or maybe DB2. In SQL also we use it to write these commands, right? Join, group, order, order by and all those things, right? So is everyone aware of SQL or anybody is new to DB2 or SQL? So is everybody fine with that? Okay, cool. So then it will be much more helpful for you to understand or write big scripts. It's like you need to take only few days to do some practice on it so that you can directly write big scripts. And the next one is a dump or store. Dump or store commands are the one which executes the PIC program. So if you take the PIC program here, you are having one, two, three, four statements, right? So for example, I write load sample dot uh, log as user carry and all those things and after A, instead of dumping it A as writing as dump, comma, dump A colon, if I write the B statement, you won't see any MapReduce job running. So it's like a continuation line that I'm going to write. 
unless and until I give a dumb statement you won't see the execution over there so it's up to me like I want to write all these three statements continuously and finally dump the value dump C or it's up to me like I want to write the first statement and C dump A if I give dump A you will see a MapReduce program running to convert this statement so dump or store commands are the one which actually start the execution of pick program so it is like a triggering point where your pick execution starts dump command to send the output to screen user during development or debugging so if at all I am writing a pick program and I am trying to test it as well as a developer then for every statement I will write a dump command and see whether it's working properly or not so if at all I see some bugs at that moment only I can state change my statement and I will try to again dump it to see the output results so it is best suited for development environment but in production we replace dump call to a store call so that any results from running your picks are stored in a file so whatever that you write in development you will test it and you will finalize it and until and unless you are confident that your program will run properly then only you will go and deploy it in production so in production we will replace all these dumb statements to a single store statement which is used to store our results in a file so that's how the usage of dump and store happens in real world so load alias is equal to load whatever the file name using function so using function it's like using pick storage right so I am using a pick storage as a function here I will explain you in a while what this pick storage actually is as a schema the schema here is user timestamp query so user the format of user timestamp the format of timestamp and query colon format of query so this is what my schema so but still the schema is optional here and pick function is sorry pick storage is if at all I give pick storage as colon sorry not colon semicolon if at all I declare this statement as in this way it will store the data as Rahul so all the fields will be separated with this variable what I am declaring with here so else if I give it as maybe equal to then it will be stored as Rahul equal to equal to in this way your outputs will be stored so it's like kind of delimiter how we want to differentiate all your fields that's it and dump is the second statement it's like dump alias so I will give so all the statements I mean all the outputs for each of your statement will be stored in a variable and that variable in pick language will call it as alias so B is a alias here so if I want to see the output I will just give it as dump B it will show you all the results and the next one is store store alias into directory so so if I want to store this store B into maybe my HDFS path user Hadoop inst that this is the common path we use it to share right so maybe the same path or maybe it's up to you where you want to store it on your Hadoop cluster that is on your HDFS some test dot output or something like that so this statement will store your 
results so but in general you will not store all your intermediate results only the final output you will be storing into a particular file so that's what all these functions talks about so tomorrow we will see a sample execution of a program and we will try to understand the different built-in functions that were available and their functionality and we will test each of the built-in function to see the outputs and how it works So any questions from tomorrow onwards we will continue the remaining slides but for today do we have any questions so our local system should have the capacity to handle the volume of data which we fetch right see it's up to you like how you want to load the data if you take the use case which we discussed earlier you are loading the data using scoop to our hdfs directly right so that is the general use case which we deal in our real world but for us we would be considering a small data sets for that reason i would be storing the data i mean i would be copying the data from my local file system to hdfs so it's not mandatory that i have to copy it through my local system only so there are many other different tools that will copy the data into my hdfs like scoop flume etc Is that fine, Prabita? Cool. Anything else, guys? So, shall we go ahead and wind up for today? Okay, fine. Thank you all for joining. Let's meet tomorrow at the same time. Yeah, tell me, Prabita. Did you talk about the recording sessions? Uh, I think Vamsi should have uh, those recording sessions, Prabita. Maybe directly you can contact to him, or maybe you can send a mail to him as well because. Uh, most of the times it's like the timings were different for me and as well as for you right so um, i'm not able to catch vamsi but if at all i see him i will let him know but meanwhile you can also drop a mail to him i'm in tvm so no issues you can just drop a mail to him to share the recordings for your installation and all the areas and for map reduce even i have I haven't shared those recordings to Vamsi. Probably today I will share those recordings. But all the earlier recordings you can share with him. Uh, you want the mail of Vamsi? Mm, I don't remember it here. One second. One second. Let me check his mail ID. This one c dot h two k infosys at gmail dot com. One c dot H2K Infosys at gmail.com. Maybe you can drop a mail to him so that he will share you the recordings that were available till now. And probably by tomorrow I will try to share a few other recordings for MapReduce also so that you will be able to go through them. Okay? Okay, fine. Welcome, Prabita. Fine, guys. Thank you all for joining. Let's meet tomorrow at the same time. Bye bye.
H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis – How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.